This film managed to capture the hearts of adults and children alike since its release in 1999. Directed by Brad Bird, this book adaptation tells the story of a young boy named Hogarth who befriends a massive gentle robot from outer space whilst seeking to protect him. Exploring themes of friendship, fear and the power of choice, this film bridges that gap between family-friendly narratives and profoundly human messages. Hello everybody and welcome back to another episode of Mate Night, the hottest up-and-coming location for movie reviews, interesting stories and provocative questions. Oh, you better believe it, baby. This is episode 27, The Iron Giant. You are hosted by myself, Jambo, and the nutritious, <laughs> the gelatinous, and the downright cantankerous scallywag, it's Fred. Oh, beauty, I preferred that one, that was lovely. Did you? That was Woo, it. Fred! <laughs> Let's go! Can you know what? Cantankerous scallywag, very yeah, nice. Do You've outdone yourself. Gelatinous. Uh, <laughs> Now, as everybody knows, here at May Night, we are on a mission to become film critics. With that in mind, we thought close. we'd begin by ranking every film ever made. So, today, we will be answering three questions. What is this film? Why is it important? And most importantly, what score does the patented Mate Night machine give this flick? Well, we can't wait, can we? Because then Ooh. we know what we feel. We we only know what we feel after the Mate Night formula has beeped and booped oh. his way. To but it's telling always us how we feel. right. And never I'm, wrong. Can't wait it's to find out what it's going to give <laughs> us. It's, it's, yeah, because we don't have any input. It just it, it just does, does, it, does, does, does it unless you are unless you're on Spotify. We just or know our secret watch is. Watch any of our old stuff. <laughs> uh, let's kick things off with a gut reaction score each. This is a truly subjective score of enjoyment, which will be used within the formula to determine the final ranking at mm. the end of this episode. Freddy, are you ready? I am 100% ready. Shall I go first? Yeah, why not? Uh, are you happy for me to count you in? You hit me, yeah. Okay, so for the gut reaction score, a truly subjective score, only a small contributing factor to the final result, but probably a little indicator for you. On the count of three. Mm -hmm. Fred, what did you think of the Iron Giant? Three, two, one. Seven point two. Seven point six. Ooh, I thought you were going to nice. go so much higher than that. Did you? How come? Oh, it's just got that nostalgic magic about it that I was surprised didn't capture my imagination For sure. that much. A very, a very fair point. Mm -hmm. However, nostalgic magic when you didn't watch it when you were young. This was a first time watch for me. It me wasn't. Too. It wasn't a, um, a, a an old favorite that mm. I was driving. And one hundred percent, if it was, if it was one that I watched as a kid. I imagine I'd be in the nines. It would be, <laughs> yeah, probably. <laughs> It'd be ten point four. Thank God uh, we got the main night system. Yeah, I think that it actually was interesting for me. I thought about what would, what would it take for me to watch a child's film that I didn't see when I was a kid, and to really have a high score. Okay, which I know we that's kind of a bit of foreshadowing for what we're going to talk about later. Um, and this one, I mean, clearly there's some amazing. There's some amazing elements to this story, but oh, yeah. it's still hard to get away from the fact that it, it, it feels like a film that if I'd have watched it when I was younger, I'd have enjoyed a lot more. You're taking the words right out of my mouth. Yeah, I felt like this was one of the first kids' films. That I, I've always had a real soft spot for animated movies. Mm -hmm. um, typically, I can still enjoy these big Disney movies and things like that yeah. that aren't meant for me I can still enjoy them as an adult but this was one where I watched it and I really started to feel that it wasn't aimed at me and I started to feel that in the amount I was enjoying it yeah and you know what we spoke about this with cults but this film not cults cult films <laughs> this this one <laughs> yeah. has that effect of it was a box office disaster yes a disaster when it came out do you have the figures I've got them here um you closer to them than me, so yeah. Twenty three million uh, from the box office budget, seventy million. I had grossing only thirty one point three against a fifty million. So well, we you never know where you can numbers, trust, but, but, it, but it has. But it, 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 it certainly was a loss. And we did the cult. We did cult films. Okay. And saw a lot of supposed like box office bombs, which really just didn't have a massive return. Mm -hmm. And took into account. Have you heard of the idea that? the budget that they say doesn't take marketing into account. Yes. So you're supposed to effectively double it. So Double it? I knew they didn't take into account. Double it? That's what they say. Double it for what? marketing. Co Commode is one who's a big proponent of that double for marketing. Well, he knows um, more than I do. Which so. he does, but I don't know if that's just a number that's plucked out of the air. I've heard Seems convenient. That. Yeah, just double your marketing. But, <laughs> sir, <laughs> I don't want to spend 70 it mil. Like, it seems mad that if you spend... <laughs> 
<laughs> Double it. <laughs> He's mad if you spent 50 don't million. Want to spend like, anymore. We're not going to We're not going to tell you what the marketing was. <laughs> <laughs> double it. It's, it's double it's <laughs> do it. Are you sure it's double? <laughs> so I want to spend triple. No. <laughs> so yeah, the uh, double it <laughs> the double it methodology would suggest <laughs> that a lot more things are box office bombs than I didn't than know we're led that. to believe, but this specifically is a box office bomb before you even get to marketing. Wow. So I think that part of the reason why it has grown um, so fondly in people's memory is because it's got that protective element of I totally see what you're them. saying. Yeah. I watched it. I liked it. It's underappreciated. That sort of mentality is why it's it's yeah. starting to find its feet a lot more. It's crazy how much of an impact it has on your enjoyment of a film what you know going into it not just in terms of the narrative and things but also in terms of like what other people thought of it because mm. you're absolutely right if, if if i go into a film and, and it's like oh everyone thought this film stink stinks and and mm. I, I might be more likely to enjoy it and you, just because of that yeah and you know i have the issue as well of of knowing the ending of every film yes even though i haven't watched it so so that always affects my opinion on the films we not won't because, spoil here, not because you're a clairvoyant but because because i uh, my whole you childhood watched i just watched for those I listening who might be wondering how he knows <laughs> the, ending the ending to every, every film, film. <laughs> <laughs> every film of all time he's, a, he's not just a master of predicting films he just watched all our youtube just to be clear <laughs> yeah so um yeah f- through my years of watching watch mojo lists yes i uh, managed to unavoidably <laughs> understand every single film's ending and so what i will find when i'm watching these films that i haven't seen is that little things will really surprise me and i'll really enjoy that oh, but maybe the general direction that the film is going because i know it it's uh it's always an interesting experience how often do we do films that you don't know the ending to or you'll know any major element of like the um, spoiler and how many films have we done that you don't know any spoilers to just the new ones Really, so pretty much so. any because we do do classics, so it's likely that Watch Mojo will have put them in lists occasionally. I think I, I got a stress helmet. There them. was a period of time, there was probably at least a year, wow, where I watched every single video, <laughs> and they used to release at least one a day, and they upped it to three a day, and so wow. I used to, and they're all top ten lists. I used to watch all of those. And then beyond that, them. I just started watching ones that I liked. But still, yeah. And and I used to read the Wikipedias to films as well when I was a yes. kid. I was always really, really interested in films. But you didn't have a vehicle to find those films and download them when we were kids. Yeah. You also didn't have things like Mate Night. You which, didn't have Mate Night. Which I'm, I'm sorry about that. But <laughs> yeah, at least we're kind of introducing that for the next generation. Yeah, exactly. And <laughs> and they can they too can be spoiled films because we will just accidentally say spoilers. <laughs> we'll say spoilers after spoiling shit. We've done all, all right. The time. Time. I almost went straight into like oh because I know the ending of this one. This is what I'm not going to. Did all you right. though? Before this, you knew the ending. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Okay. So, all right. Here's some. I'm going to go through some points. Please do. Of things that were good. Things that were maybe were bad under the guise of how much of this is nostalgia and how much of this is actually a quality animated film of that time so first thing i want to speak about the actual animation itself okay how do you feel for a film from 1999 this stacks up to others of that period well i can tell you exactly what films came out that year i got that list star wars episode one toy story 2 the matrix the mummy uh stuart little so Toy Story 2, Toy Story is the first fully computer yes. animated. What year was that? Like 94 well, this was 99, I think it must have been 90, 95. Okay. So I was closer than I thought that. I thought I completely... Yeah, good effort. <laughs> so um, yeah, that's the first ever fully computer animated film, Toy Story. Yeah. Uh, this won't have been fully computer they, animated. They computer time. animated only the giant itself and everything else was hand-drawn. Yeah, which is unsurprising. I mean, it's Warner Bros. Warner Brothers property, so they were known for Looney Tunes and things like that, which f- famous hand-drawn okay. animation. Okay, so could you Disney tell star. the difference when you were watching it between the giant and the... Because I couldn't. I couldn't uh, tell that it was computer versus non. No, I, I would... I did watch it on a plane... Okay. So it probably wasn't the best place to, to be able to tell you, the difference. But it wasn't blatant. No, it wasn't not on like that I screen. I have, there are sometimes things that I'll watch 
which do a mix where it is quite noticeable. Yes. Some anime now will do like a background of CGI with hand drawn characters. Over, so Attack on Titan does that. Yes. Really well. Um, okay. Uh, oh, what's it called? Aladdin had a few scenes where mixed CGI and okay. hand drawn, which were very noticeable. <laughs> In this one, I couldn't notice it, but I would have guessed at that time period they had a lot of uh, yes. uh, a lot of hybrids. Well, I would say to be completely frank with them, in comparison to Toy Story coming out in '95, it certainly wasn't a massive task making this film. I don't think. No, I wasn't. I wasn't impressed with the animation style. I thought that, like, I know it's up against Disney of that time, but, yeah, but Tarzan Warner Brothers came are... out. Tarzan came out around then. Tarzan looks. Phenomenal compared to the Iron Giant. Does it? It's yeah, been a while since and also okay. the Prince of Egypt. I don't know which so what is that it? was. But. So Tarzan visually looks kind of similar in the way that it's animated. You know how Toy Story is completely different looking, but Tarzan mm. and Iron Giant. So what is it that makes that look better than this? What's the difference there? They're both hand-drawn, so I think part of it will be the drawing style. Okay. So I felt like the imagery used within the Iron Giant I, I had to remind myself when it came out. Okay. When I started watching, I was like, I was sure this was like a late nineties film, but it looks like the same. It, it looked like it was like at least ten years earlier. So is it the level of detail? Is it the, is it the quality of the detail? It the is quality it the... of the drawing was a lot worse than the, say the is compared to Disney at the time. Sure, sure, yeah. Like yeah the yeah. Tarzan drawing. Is like think about the leopard scene and that and the way that the the movement. I can't remember it, unfortunately. So the, the, well, you, I remember it, but I couldn't. So some of the animals and I know Disney. Look, you're talking about the the big budget at that time, but you're sure. competing against this. So it was, it was for totally me a, a, totally a step agree. down. Um, and I don't know. I'm not an expert on how animation is created and how these drawings are put to life, but it felt like the level of animation quality in the Iron Giant was about 10 or 15 years behind what Disney was doing at yes. the same time. Yeah. I Purely mean, you talk visually. About, you talk about the movement of the cat, the big cat in It's, it's like fluid. They're so... <laughs> yes. Like, Disney was so good at making, like, fluid... Yeah. Even fl that. It's been a long time since I watched Tarzan, and even that, um, I do remember what you're talking about now. Mm. Yeah. And Disney, I don't know. I think Disney now has moved fully computer... Okay. I don't know if they do, but um, anime still does hand drawn. Right. Okay. It's pretty cool because hand drawn yeah. has such a, a a dynamic style. Yeah, I think in short it wasn't terribly good. Mm, and yeah, sorry, we spent a bit of time on animation. I just wanted to say yeah, that wasn't one of the points where I felt it was great compared to its peers. Um, story and characters, though, really, really good. I really loved the relationship between Hogarth and the giant. Mm -hmm. um, particularly uh, enjoyed. Um, What's it, Harry? The, the Dean, the scrapyard artist? Yes. I thought he was great. I loved the characters. Really all of great them. Character. Even the mum, who was really just a something and nothing side character that needed to be yeah, there. Yeah, lovely. Was quite likeable and interesting. I think that was probably the... Well, outside of the story, some elements of the story itself, the characters were probably my favourite part. Yeah. Um, I thought just across the board, really, really good. Top tier. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The giant itself, I really liked the kind of vulnerability that it had. Like, I thought it was just such a nice... He's obviously supposed to be kind of the marketable element of the story. He's, yes. he's the thing you can you can make toys out of, and he's, he's the, the fun, the, the humour element, and um, <coughs> the, the lovable, engaging yeah. Yeah. character. The vulnerable one. That yeah, you can exactly. Really kind of... And I think he did. they did a really good job with that. Yeah. Minimal speaking lines... Vin Diesel of so his performance. 52 lines or so? 52 words? 53 words, okay. apparently. Excluding yells and groans. Right, okay. I wonder how many it'd be with. <laughs> um, right, so we won't go into spoilers, but the messaging, not messaging so much, but the ending, um, really cool. Uh, climax of the film for me, very, very emotional. Yes. A lot of emotional weight to it. What contributed to that was the setting, so kind of the 50s. Um, Cold War Apex Paranoia. was was a cool setting to be yes. involved in an animated film. I couldn't remember any that were well, none sprang to mind that had a similar setting to that. I really yeah. liked that. It was a nice vibe. I'm told that the uh, they were incredibly accurate as well. Supposedly, like they did, they went quite a long way to making all the military uh, uniforms look incredibly accurate in the way that you know. I imagine a, like the duck and cover like um, sure, propaganda yeah. that they had probably was something. Yeah, that they that's said it. In, there was a lot of accuracies in there. Yeah, absolutely. Um, so, a couple of things that weren't 
and kind of diminished it a bit. I won't go into details on the ending, but they they made a decision which ended up lessening the emotional weight of the ending for me. Which I was trying to figure out how to say this without spoiling it, and I yeah, couldn't agree more. Yeah, yeah, so I think there is an incredibly emotionally impactful end of the film, which they, they managed to lessen. Um, yes. And the so I mean it's a bit caricaturish for some of the characters but it's a cartoon you a know? lot of the things that you've raised really do stem from it, that whole thing about it is a kids movie and you can feel that throughout it you know in terms of the way that they diminished the ending it was obvious to me that what they were doing mm. was making it more appealing to children sure it, it would have been a very brave decision not to but yeah. I, that was one thing I didn't know happened I knew about okay. the ending and I didn't know about <laughs> oh, how let's go. so I was kind of like trick the clairvoyance slightly disappointed um, I think overall for me then if we're talking about nostalgia versus quality sure it is I gave it seven point two. I think it's a good animated film, yeah. and I will, I watch animated films for, for kids that I haven't seen before. I do try and pick them up because Rachel's a big fan, uh, and this was one of the ones I was like, "Yep, yeah, that's a pretty good it's one." A good one. It's got some good characters. I like the story. I like the setting, but nothing about it was like this is ex- this kind of yeah. is exceptional. It, it sets itself apart and makes it one of those great films that I missed. Yeah, which is why it, it for me borders more on the nostalgia still glad though that something that was a box office bomb is now so fondly remembered that's quite nice yeah absolutely i think one of the best things about it is the it was diminished but the emotional messages within it the explorations Mm. of themes the thing that was really amazing about it was that bit that was probably ruined for you despite the superman scene and Mm. the the quotes about you know it's it's there was some there was some quote where the was it the giant no somebody had said it's bad to kill but okay to die it was stuff like that Mm. where i think what it did well was it explored themes in a good way yeah and i do think that one thing i always seem surprised at is kids films seem to be really good at that yeah they they tend to pick a lane for thematically, don't they? Uh, yeah. They'll be like, okay, this is our kids' film. Yes. This is our setting. And what message are we going to incorporate into this? And it's so much this more was a, powerful. This was a good one, I, I felt. Yes. This was a good all-round, enjoyed the message. And the, 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 the little uh, light bulb moment, the little catalyst moment that made this story, it's a book adaptation, as you probably are aware, mm that made it happen was what if a gun had a soul and didn't want to kill right and it is really it is does explore themes in a in a way that is both in line with that but also really enjoyable to kind of participate in and i mm. think it is one of the strongest points of the film is the themes that it that it puts forward very nice so so some good scores from us and i think we both agree that this is a, a good one worth the watch but does the mate night formula agree so yeah. now we're going to Turn off the lights. <laughs> we are <laughs> going snuggly. to. We're going to leave the room to see. We're going to because we don't want you to hear anything. We're going to fry some fry some oil yep, in yep. some pans. Yep, we're going to we're going to hit some whack a moles. We're going <laughs> yeah. to change clothes <laughs> for sure. We're gonna change your clothes and come. What else is going to happen? Nobody know. knows. Nobody it's going to get P Diddy freaky, baby. <laughs> <laughs> All right. And we're going to come out with a number. <laughs> All right. We'll see you guys in a moment then. Woo! Woo! That was some. What? Oh my that God. Was some Fresh. session. I like that top, mate. <laughs> that was some session. What the hell? What a change of clothes. Yeah. And that horse had no reason to be here. <laughs> we've come back, we'll ladies and gentlemen, with some number. We've beep booped. We've twiddled some knobs. A bit too many knobs. Yeah, please stop twiddling me. knobs. And now we have definitively, um, immutably returned with the defining score of. The Iron Giant's cinematic uh, cultural career, Mate Night, is going patented. to give you this score. Yep. Go on, Jambo. What are we? What are we talking here? Out of ten, The Iron Giant. Six point seven six. Okay. Yeah. Look, obviously the, the the machine's never wrong, so 
we have to take that so into we consideration, wrong. but it does seem slightly lower than I expected. Um, yeah, and we're going to formalise this, but six anything above 6.5 is a net good. Yeah, it's a net good. A good yeah. and, and, you know, where, g- give us some context yeah. in terms of percentiles, where we're looking at. Yeah, so uh, very much in the bottom 25%. Right. <laughs> <laughs> All right, well, listen, thank you so much for tuning in this far. We really genuinely do appreciate it, and we look forward to seeing you on the next one. Nice one. Cheers, guys.